For this dose of Cinemania, we'll look at the gags and the laughs in the best movie spoofs. We'll delve into the British invasion taking Hollywood by storm and discover what film makes it to number one on our list of top guy movies. All this and more as we look at the silver screen's best and worst in Cinemania. Let's start with a countdown of Cinemania's best spoof movies. Can you guess which one will top the list? At number five is God Only Knows, a spoof on India's hurly-burly political scene. Inspired by the play Last Tango in Heaven, the film presents Indra, the King of Heaven, as an idle and over-inquisitive lord who makes a rather unceremonious wish of becoming a 20th century modern man. He has a totally negative image. He's associated with death. We have just finished an extensive market research to find out who God prefer as their king. A two-hour laugh riot, complete with songs, sex and loads of melodrama, God Only Knows spoofs everything under the sun, from Bollywood, politics, hospitals, income tax to films. No topic was spared for the flick, leaving audiences laughing all the way to the cinemas. That's why God Only Knows comes in at number five. Coming in at number four on Cinemania's best spoof movies list is the audience favourite, Scary Movie 3. The Hollywood horror spoof takes shots in this instalment at blockbusters The Ring, Signs and The Matrix Reloaded. This really scary voice comes on and says you're going to die in like seven days. Yeah, I saw that one with Josh last weekend. You're with Josh last weekend? Oh my God. <laughs> The third time is still outrageously funny as David Zucker of Airplane fame took over the directorial reins. This time around, Anna Faris is a TV reporter investigating crop circles and killer videotapes while trying to save the world from an alien invasion. Cindy, the news is on. Another little white girl that fell down the well. Scary Movie 3 garnered $110 million in domestic box office sales, and that's why this horror spoof came in at number four. Cindy, this little white girl is messing up my floor! <laughs> Taking the number three spot in our best movie spoof is Johnny English, a comic movie parodying the James Bond secret agent genre. In this uncertain world, few things are as dependable as the British Secret Service, admired for its calibre of agents. Agent One, you overestimate your power over women. I'd say that would be virtually impossible. English! <laughs> Gentlemen. When Johnny English, a bumbling office clerk in the British Secret Service, inadvertently finds himself the last remaining agent to foil a plot to steal the crown jewels of Britain, the hopes of an entire nation rest on this incompetent man. Rowan Atkinson plays his usual awkward, inept character, worthy of many laughs. Sign and date, please. Oh, reminds me of the old service issue ballpoint. I remember every agent would Look out 007 as the clumsy gags and laughs see the spoof spy thriller take out the number three spot. Taking Cinemania's second place on the list of best movie spoofs is Team America World Police. Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, have never shied away from abrasive content or political controversy. The foul-mouthed pair tackled a world of terrorists, pacifist actors and weapons of mass destruction in a spoof about power, politics and terrorism, filmed with wooden puppets. ...the world from falling apart. And so you see, the new world is inevitable. It's what? Ineb inevitable. 
One more time. Inevitable. Things are inevitably going to change. The inspiration for Team America came from the 1960s British television series The Thunderbirds, which Parker and Stone came across by accident. He's getting away with the WFD. I got him. I missed him. Team America fights terrorism and other evils and along the way ridicules the typical Hollywood action movie. And that's why it comes in on our list at number two. What do you get when you mix fearless comedic genius with box office blockbusters? That's right, Cinemania's number one best movie spoof is Scary Movie 4. Director David Zucker scares up more laughs in the fourth instalment, spoofing big screen hits including Saw, War of the Worlds and The Village. Hello gentlemen, right now you are both breathing in a deadly nerve gas. Reach the antidote or you die. Anna Faris is back as the lovable, dim-witted Cindy Campbell as she battles to save the world from an alien invasion, while Dr. Phil and Shaquille O'Neal also make cameos. Cut through our feet. You go first. I did it. The film grossed over $41 million in just its first weekend, proving that people are always willing to pay for a laugh. Enjoy your purple nurple, Tom. Please, your son wouldn't want this. His soul walks the earth because of the pain you're causing. No, I have crossed the galaxy for revenge. Oh, wet willy! Look upon this. Taking aims at horror films and mocking pop culture, Scary Movie 4 takes out Cinemania's number one spot for best movie spoof. C.S. Lewis's timeless adventure, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, has delighted generations of children for decades. Today we'll take a look behind the scenes and follow the exploits of the four Pevensey siblings, Lucy, Edmund, Susan and Peter, who enter the world of Narnia through a magical wardrobe. Among the scenes documented on the DVD, Beyond the Magic of Narnia, are behind the scenes footage. The film marks the first live action directorial effort for New Zealander Andrew Adamson, who also co-wrote the screenplay adaptation with Emmy Award winning Anne Peacock. The disc includes a whole feature on the shooting of just one scene, The Melting River, and reveals all the trade secrets. That few seconds of film took the cast and crew from Auckland, New Zealand, to Prague, to Poland, and back to Los Angeles. Narnia, which has sold 85 million copies in 29 languages since The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe was published in 1950, carries a built-in core audience that crosses generations. Time to count down Cinemania's greatest biopics, from the musicals to the sporting to the downright thrilling. Cinemania's fifth greatest biopic looks at the remarkable life of the greatest boxer in the world, Muhammad Ali. Floating, stinging, punching, prophesizing, he transformed his sport and became the world's most adored athlete. The picture charts a dramatic 10-year period in the life of Muhammad Ali. The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here! Run up like a butterfly, sing like a bee! Rumble, young man, rumble! Ah! Transformation is the theme of this biopic from Michael Mann, who succeeds in showing how Ali, by refusing to let others define him, redefined himself, African Americans and all America. 
The film, which had the blessing of Ali, is the most expensive biopic ever made, costing over $100 million. All right, now listen, I'm going to hit your hands six times before you get the three. It's easy to see why he was the greatest. And that's why Ali is at number five. Coming in at number four on Cinemania's list of the greatest biopics is the story about the man in black. Walk the Line tells the story of the legendary Johnny Cash, a shy man who cultivated an outlaw image and sang of hard luck lives in hard living songs. He took the stage with a stony face and a guitar aimed at the audience. Now, Gene, you're beautiful. Bound by wild desire. Jacqueline Phoenix plays Cash as the film follows his life from the cotton fields of Arkansas in the 1940s to his celebrated performance at Folsom Prison in 1968, which produced a best-selling live album. Tell me you don't love me. I don't love you. Both Jacqueline Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon were nominated for Oscars for their roles in the film. Given the late singer's huge influence on music, on folk, rock, country and punk, audiences and critics alike love the film, and that's why it's at number four. Coming in at number three is Academy Award nominated Capote. Have you read the article about the killings in Kansas? I think that's what I want to write about. Hello, my name is Truman Capote. <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman underwent a remarkable transformation as the bespectacled dapper writer Truman Capote, who changed American literature with his story of murder in the American heartland. Kansas Bureau of Investigation, KBI. <laughs> I think how good my book can be, I can hardly breathe. Based on the Capote biography written by Gerald Clark, Capote chronicles Truman's life as he writes about the brutal murders of a Kansas family. It presents an opportunity, he believes, to test his long-held theory that in the hands of the right writer, non-fiction can be as compelling as fiction. He says it's the non-fiction book of the decade. We still haven't talked about that night. His subject is now as profound as any American writer has ever tackled. It's nothing less than the collision of two Americas, the safe, protected country and the rootless, amoral country. That's why Capote comes in at number three. Cinemania's number two biopic looks at legendary blues singer Ray Charles. The film tells the story of an exceptional man who became an American icon. It details his life from Charles's humble beginnings to his meteoric rise to stardom. If you want me to do something special, I'm going to need my own band. Okay, but you're going to have to make it work, Ray. Yeah, well, I'm going to make it do what it do, baby. <laughs> yeah. The film also tackles the issue of Ray's blindness, his battles against racism, his own Nobody's personal demons, which included drug gospel. use and womanizing, and his awe-inspiring talent that revolutionized American oh, popular music. Let me hear you say, amen. You know I had my eye on you all night long. He feels a risk because he figures that's the way to tell him she's good looking or not. The performance is one that generated Jamie Foxx a lot of praise and garnered him an Oscar for Best Actor. The only thing more extraordinary than the music is the man behind it, and that's why Ray comes in at number two. And now, Cinemania's number one biopic is heralded as one of the greatest American films ever made, Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull. Hey, Ray. Never went down, Ray. Never got me down, Ray. You hear me? Never got me down. Consistently making critics lists since its release in 1980, Raging Bull is in the top 25 of the American Film Institute's list of top 100 greatest American movies. Scorsese's film tells the story of middleweight champ, the physically tough but emotionally self-destructive, Jake LaMotta. The cinematic masterpiece won De Niro his second Oscar and earned nominations for Best Director and Best Picture. Oh, I already made up my mind. I'm leaving. That's it. 
kids are gonna be with me, and if you show your face around, I'm gonna call the cops on you. All right? Come That's on, it. Don't act that way, in the film's look at the gladiatorial sport of boxing, LaMotta unsparingly engages other boxers in the ring in some of the most realistic, visceral, bloody and brutal boxing scenes ever filmed. With this film, Martin Scorsese's personal approach to filmmaking was taken to a whole new level, and that's why Raging Bull is Cinemania's greatest biopic. Let's face it. Beginning the trend of Brits in Hollywood was the epitome of debonair charm, Cary Grant, who was one of Hollywood's top box office attractions for several decades. From one Grant to another, and Hugh Grant has carved a niche for himself in Hollywood known as the blundering Englishman, emoting that genuinely British mix of goofy politeness and shyness. <laughs> Dame Judi Dench started the British invasion many years ago, being highly acclaimed on both stage and screen. Regarded by many as one of the greatest living British actors, Dench's roles have spanned genres from modern theatre to drama movies. Oh, God. oh, Janet, you do it. Oscar-nominated actress Kira Knightley has blossomed into a true English rose. She made her character of regal Englishwoman Elizabeth Bennet her own in the adaptation of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, earning herself an Oscar nomination for Best Actress for the role. Yes. Two-time Oscar winner Michael Caine is one of the veterans of the film industry. The screen legend who burst onto the scene in the 1960s with his trademark no Cockney idea. accent has now starred in over 100 films, with Alfie catapulting him into the American market. Um, Alfie is obviously the one because that was the one that did it for me as a star in a movie with my name over the title and also did it in America for me. With a new generation of stars, the toast of Britain looks set to cement their spot in Hollywood quite smoothly. Time to find out which guy movies made it onto Cinemania's top guy movies list. Coming in at number five is The Matrix, a story revolving around the rebels versus the machines, which culminates in a final explosive battle. I won't. As the machine army wages devastation on Zion, the last safe haven for humans, its citizens mount an aggressive defence. However, it's a battle against time as the rebels try to stave off the machines long enough for Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, to end the war. Mr. Anderson, who are you? Look past the flesh and see your enemy. The Matrix accumulated over $450 million worldwide and became the fastest selling DVD on record at the time of its release and scooped four Academy Awards. If we have to give our lives, we give him hell before we do! The action-packed sci-fi thriller combines all the dangerous, exciting elements young men want. And that is why The Matrix comes in at number five. Or in his. Mr. Anderson, welcome back. We missed you. It ends tonight. Coming in at number four on Cinemania's list of top guy movies is Anchorman. Comedy's hottest star Will Ferrell plays Ron Burgundy, the top-rated anchorman in 1970s San Diego, who is aghast when he's forced to share his news desk with a female anchor, played by Christina Applegate. It's boring. When feminism marches into the newsroom, it becomes more than a battle between two perfectly quaffed anchor persons. It's war. What if just for tonight we weren't co-workers, we were co-people? The movie is a tongue-in-cheek take on the culture of the 1970s, particularly the television program format. Absolutely. I'd also like to share with you that we are currently dating and that she is quite a handful in the bedroom. Uh-oh. The movie combines the male chauvinist attitudes of the era with hilarity and awesome one-liners, making it the perfect choice for Cinemania's number four spot. What are you doing on our station's turf, Burgundy? Come get a taste. Yay! Yeah! 
Coming in at number three on Cinemania's top guy movies is cult classic, The Terminator. John Connor. It is time. In the year of darkness, 2029, the rulers of this planet devised the ultimate plan. They would reshape the future by changing the past. The plan required something that felt no pity, no pain, no fear, something unstoppable. They created the Terminator. Oh my God! Sent back from the future to protect John Connor, the leader of the resistance, the Terminator must do all it can to protect the future of the free world. The James Cameron-directed film was the breakout role for Arnold Schwarzenegger and made him a bankable Hollywood star. The movie made over $39 million at the box office and spawned two successful sequels. Suspense and explosive action sums up this classic, making it a favourite of fans all over the world, which is why it comes in at number three. Coming in at number two is comedy favourite, The Wedding Crashes. Oh, I always knew my first time would be on a beach. First time? We're going to be so happy together. I love you. I'm sorry? The funny flick follows the adventures of divorce mediators, John and Jeremy, two bachelors who have devised the perfect way for picking up girls. Gate crashing weddings. Really? Oh, I'm gonna run it my way, Dad. Well, don't ask you that. Don't ask you that. Don't. You're going. I'm not going. Yes, you are. You can go if you want. I'm, You're gonna. Be... I'm not even gonna say it, but you, you, you know I'm. A... This activity involves creating Sorry, fake I'm identities. The family again. Uncle Ned's kids. You know, Uncle Ned, Aunt Liz's brother. <laughs> Helping themselves to free food and drinks, seducing women aroused by the very thought of marriage, and ultimately disappear with no strings attached. Hey, is your brother okay? I can't breathe. Oh, he's fine. They're just a couple of guys who just want to have fun. And that's why The Wedding Crashes is at number two on Cinemania's top guy movies list. I <laughs> do. And now it's time for Cinemania's number one top guy movie, the 1980 blockbuster starring John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, The Blues Brothers. Jake and Elwood Blues were on a mission from God. After the release of Jake from prison, the brothers discover their childhood home is being sold and the only way to keep it open is if $5,000 is paid within 11 days. The brothers want to help and decide to put their blues band back together and raise money by staging a big gig. The movie included performances by Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, as well as the so-called godfather of soul, James Brown. First you trade the Cadillac for a microphone. Then you lie to me about the band. Now you're gonna put me right back in the joint. They're not gonna catch us. We're on a mission from God. Belushi and Aykroyd's Blues Brothers musical act and their subsequent movie inspired a new generation to embrace vintage soul and blues. And that's why it's Cinemania's top guy movie. But if that was you and me, I tell baby, I would have shown you how to do it right. That's all we've got time for. Be sure to tune in next time for your dose of Cinemania.